Hello there, I'm GB Vegas, and in this mini Unity tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a health bar very similar to what you would see in Fallout 4. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon to stay up to date with every tutorial on my channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work on this health bar. So, it's actually pretty simple. And the general idea is down here in the left corner, we have our health and we have like a little meter or it seems that slides up and down depending on our health. So let's start with that firstly. So game object, UI, and let's go with raw image. And this raw image, let's change the color so we can select the little pipette tool and we'll have it a green color. So I'm going to choose this green right here, double click. And we can see, there we are, right in the middle of the screen. And we're going to anchor it down here to the bottom left. I'm going to rename and have health bar and I'm going to stretch it to 200 and have the height as let's say 30 maybe and I'm going to bring it down into the bottom corner maybe about there so let's set this as 120. So hopefully we should be able to see at this point where we're really going with this and the idea of having uh, a little bit underneath and a little bit at each side is actually real simple to do. And we can just take that health bar, hold control, press D, and shrink it to, let's say, probably three maybe. And if we zoom in just a little bit more, we can align this perfectly at the end. So let's double click, zoom in, and bring it one here. Hold control, press D to duplicate, and let's bring it to the other side all the way to here. Now it may just look like a green bar right now, however it will all make sense. And finally we can take this bar right here, hold control, press D, drag it down and let's stretch it so as it covers all three of those objects above. So we'll need to make the width of it 206 and height we'll have as three and let's just couple it together. And the original object we have, this health bar, you can see if we get rid of it now there's the container for our health bar. So let's group these together. So let's group that one into there, that one into there, and rename as health container. And then let's reactivate the health bar. Okay, so now we're ready to work with this and we need to create a C-sharp script. So right click, create C-sharp script, and let's have this as health monitor. And let's open it up in Visual Studio. So we're going to have quite a few uh, variables here because the idea is I want to be able to make it go up or down depending, you know, if we're being hit or if we've used a stim pack or, you know, whatever. So that's what we're going to aim for. Um, we need to get rid of any annotations. We don't need them. I'm going to leave void start and void update in there for now. Everything is going to be done in void update, but we're going to simulate being hit and recovering our health using void start because, you know, the, at the moment, but there's no enemies in this scene, but you would just uh, swap your script around. I'll explain a little bit as we go along. So let's start with the length for our health bar. So let's go with public float. Let's have health length and we'll make it equal to what it currently is, which is 200. So 200 semicolon. Next, we will have the position of where our health bar is because it may not seem it, but these two are absolutely relative to each other. We need to actually be able to update both of these values at the same time. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to make this health bar work correctly. So public float and let's have this as health pause and we'll make it equal to what it currently is right now, which is 120. So we're only going to do this on the X axis. So 120 semicolon. So next what we have to do is actually reference the health bar itself. So public game object health bar semicolon. And the next is going to be a damage amount. So i.e. how much damage we're going to take. Now this is where we're, the simulation of what we're going to do comes into play because this really should be dictated by your enemy, how much health your enemy will take off you. But like I say, it's irrelevant at this point. Public and float. And we'll have this called damage amount, semicolon. And next we need two bools because we need to say, are we increasing or are we decreasing health? And that's going to be yes or no. So true or false. 
So public bool decreasing health, semicolon. Public bool increasing health, semicolon. Uh, default will make both of these equals false because we don't want anything to occur where we don't need it to. And finally, what we're going to have last is the hit value. So i.e. what is the amount of damage that it's going to be, or rather what we expect it to be. This is relative to damage amount. So let's say the hit value is going to be 30, and our damage amount is going to count how much we have going on. So we'll increment by half in the damage amount every time until the damage amount is equal to the hit value. So we'll be doing an if statement in just a moment. So public float and we'll have a hit value. And we'll make this equals to 30 semicolon. So what do we do now? This is important, this bit, because we need to maintain our health bar. We need to make sure that it's updated accurately. So we need to change the position and the actual placement and size. So we need to go health bar dot transform dot position equals new vector two, not vector three. The reason we're using vector two is because we're doing this in the canvas, which is a 2D environment. There is no Z or Z in this. It's only X and Y. And because we're doing the health position on X, we have the first one as health pause, comma, and then the value of Y, in this case, 30. So we need to keep this constant 30, semicolon. Next thing we have to do is the health bar itself. So health bar dot get component, because we're stating the height and the width at this point. So we need to get the component rect transform in spiky brackets, open close bracket, dot size delta, because we're, like I say, we're setting the size, and that's going to be the same again, new vector three, uh, vector two, sorry, because again, it's in a 2D environment, and it's going to be width and height. So the width is going to be the length here, with the length, uh, same sort of thing in this instance, because both going across the screen. So although it's 200, we're going to have to put this variable in, which is health length, semicolon. And the same applies for the height. The height is going to be a static 30. So 30. Again, if yours is slightly different, maybe yours is 25, just make sure you do get those variables correct. Uh, I've just noticed I've done this in void start. We don't want that in void start. We want it in update. We will use void start, but we're doing all this in updates. That's my mistake there. So back to work. What we're going to do now is when we're getting hit. So we need to check if decreasing health is equals to true, i.e. if our enemy is hitting us, we would set this bool as true. So if decreasing health equals true, open curly bracket. What we also need to check for now is if the damage amount is greater or equal to the hit value. So if damage amount is greater than or equal to hit value, open curly bracket. So just to give you an example of this, if we've just been hit, our damage amount will be zero and start increasing rapidly until it gets the amount of hit value. So if it does get to that amount, we need to put decreasing health back equals to false because at this point it will be true. So we just need to set it back to false and then set damage amount back to zero. We're resetting it. So at this point, if damage amount isn't greater than or equal to hit value, we need an else statement because this is where the damage will take place. And we need damage amount plus equals, let's have 0 0.5. So the higher this value here, the quicker your health will decrease. And okay, let me quickly just check that. That didn't come up right, did it? So damage amount is plus equals 0.5 f there we go because it's a float and now what we do 
is we have to take away the same value from our length of our health meter. So health length uh, minus equals 0 0.5 F semicolon. And now this is where the tricky bit comes in. We have to make the position of the actual health bar take away half of what this value is. The reason being that if we were to decrease this width now, you can see what's happening. It's shrinking from both sides, but we only want it to shrink from one side. So we have to realign the X position as we're taking away from the width. That way, this left side always stays static and it's this right side that moves. So we can go health pause minus equals 0 0.25 F with a semicolon. Like I say, we have to decrease it by half of what this value is all the time. Otherwise, it will start sliding off the screen. So just remember, these two are relative to each other. The position always has to be half of what the length is. It's mandatory, otherwise it will not work. So we've got that all working now. So what about the inverse of that? What if we're going to gain health? Well, we can do that. We need to do the same sort of uh, process. So we can go after this if statement and create a new if statement. So if, and in um, brackets, we have uh, increasing health equals true, open curly bracket. Then we do if damage amount is greater than or hit value. So same again, if damage amount is greater than or equal to hit value. Now this is where your reference to the stim pack comes in. So let's say our stim pack does uh, 90 health or something. So we'll have multiplied by or 60. Let's have multiplied by two. So we're going to increase double of what we've been hit with our stim pack. And like I say, this variable will be relative to your game. This is where you have to state in your game how much your stim packs or health potions or whatever will do to increase your health. So open curly bracket. After that, we'll have increasing health equals false because we're resetting it. And like I say, if you're using a stim pack, your stim pack script would say, yes, increasing health is now true. So that is where this will come into effect. Like I say, we'll simulate what we're doing. Uh, so after we're increasing health, we need damage amount back equal to zero. And once again, we also need that else statement because if it isn't, we need to have damage amount plus equals 0 0.5 F again. And here, this is where we're going to increase our health. So health length is going to be a plus rather than a negative, and so is health pause. It's going to be a plus, not negative. So health length plus equals 0 0.5 F, semicolon. Same with health pause plus equals 0 0.25 F, semicolon. So that is all there is to it. So I'm going to save that script. You're not going to see anything change at this point because we're not being hit and we're not recovering our health. But if you were to use it in your game, this is about all you would need to do. So I now need to simulate the idea of being hurt or, you know, taking damage or re uh, recovering with a stim pack. So I'm going to put in my void start up here, start co routine, and in brackets, we'll have health change, open close bracket close bracket semicolon which means down the bottom now after my void update I need to go I enumerator and I'm going to call it health change oh, close bracket open curly bracket and by all means you can follow along at this point because you can see how this is going to react so I'm going to have a sequence of events so I'm going to start my game yield return new wait for seconds and I'm going to wait for two seconds when we start the game then after two seconds I'm going to take away some health so decreasing health equals true semicolon then I'll wait for let's say another maybe three seconds and then after three seconds we'll take some more health off 
Then we'll wait for another three seconds and we'll take some more health off. And then we'll wait for another three seconds. And then should we add health? Let's let's add health. So increasing health equals true. Semicolon and save. So all this is for, as I've said numerous times, this is just to simulate being hit and recovering with a stim pack. So if we head back into Unity, wait for it to have a quick think. And it looks like we're all okay. So let's clear the console. Not sure what that is. And let's attach our health monitor to a game object. So create empty, drag and drop health monitor. And the only thing we need to drag over here is our actual health bar. So drag the health bar there. I'm going to save my scene and I'm now going to press play. So after two seconds, we should see our health bar decrease a little. There we go. And then a little bit more. And then a little bit more again. And now we're going to use a stim pack. There we go. Excellent. So that is pretty much how you can do it. So as for radiation, you can use the exact same method. Literally the exact same method. You would just have your red over this side doing the opposite of what's happening here. So essentially, as your health decreases, your let's say you're, we're in radiation, our red will increase at the same velocity as we're taking away. So for example, if we were to take uh, this one here, so we're losing the health here, but we can use this to gain health using the red lines. So same principle, like I say, use this health bar, duplicate it red. It's hidden until you take some radioactive damage. Easy. That's really all there is to it. So I hope that this has helped to a degree. It's, you know, it's just one of these things that you've got the basics here. You can now take these basics and then advance them as much as you need to. So guys, if you want to know any more about this, this is the second Fallout related video I've done because I think it's quite popular. But if you want to see any more, you know, how anything's done in the Fallout world, for example, please, please speak up below and I will see what I can do. So guys, until next time, thank you very much for watching.